Hello everyone, my name is Jasmine Sadler, the dancing rocket scientist. My background's in aerospace engineering, ballet, entrepreneurship, and education. So thanks for having me. I'm here today and we're gonna do a windmill and have it lift some things. And so that's using energy and air to actually power something. So let's get started. So I have a couple of supplies. I have my instructions here, which is the main important thing. I have um, cardstock or construction paper, they say. I also thought about, um, yeah, I ended up using a folder because that's what we had around here. Um, there's a string. They say cotton or poly string is best. I found this yarn. I don't know if you all have string, don't use thread, but you know, some type of thicker strings have this yarn because I used to knit a lot when I was younger. Um, a cup, a plastic drinking cup. We have small cups um, or what I came across were these little to-go cups from a restaurant that may be good to have. Um, paper clips. We'll see how to use these. Some tape. Um, a hole puncher. We don't necessarily need a hole puncher, but we'll see if we want to use that or don't. And then we have some pennies, and these are what we're going to lift. I also have a ruler. I know some of you all may not have rulers. We'll do a little variety of ways to measure things just in case. I have a pencil because every good engineer or mathematician needs a pencil. And then this was one of the hardest things to find. But then when we thought about it a bit more, my, my brother, he's a computer engineer and web designer. So we all just thought out of the box with some of these things because we didn't want to run to the store just to do this. And I know a lot of you all can't just run to the store. And so we need two different size straws. And so we have these drinking straws. We won't use the bendable side, but it's a, a smaller straw or a smaller diameter straw and then a bigger straw. And so uh, we, we thought about what, what are some bigger straws and maybe some to-go cups, or if you go to any fast food place, you can have straws with a bigger diameter. So some to-go ones. And so we'll see which ones kind of work best. So have a variety of these. And so a lot of it I wanted to save for you all to so we could try to engineer and experiment some of this together. So the first thing that we will do is cut out a six and a half inch by six and a half inch square out of our folder. I went to the University of Michigan where I studied aerospace engineering and math. And so this is um, what we will use for this. And so six and a half inches. Um, since I wanna kinda keep the block M in there, um, I'm gonna try to measure the six and a half inches around that. So that gets me there for the start. And then you start at the end of your ruler and every inch and then you go to six and six and a half is right between six and seven. And then same thing, I will measure it the height and try to get my block in somewhere in the middle there. And so I'll just go all the way to the end well, I'll measure, you will also probably measure it from here. So the end of your ruler to six and a half inches. And then sometimes it's just good to do it in two spots alongside of it. So then you can connect those lines together. So top of your ruler, six and a half. So then I'm just gonna connect the dots that I made Draw those lines perpendicular so that they run into each other. All right, and then one main thing about engineering, you're supposed to measure twice and count once. So, no, sorry, measure twice and cut once. So um, another way to measure this if you don't have uh, a ruler handy, but you can use something like your pencil to kind of measure. So six and a half is almost the length of my pencil here. 
um, you can use your straw. So, you know, just a good, you, the main thing is you want to make a good square out of it. So to make a square, your length and your width have to be the same size. So that's what's most important. So even if my square was all the way down here and then make my square this long as well. So now we're going to cut that out. Hopefully that's the hardest part of this. <laughs> Not being too exact, but you know, pretty close to where my lines are. All right. So it's not centered in there, but that's okay. The main thing is I wanted a square. And so this may look more like a square optical illusion <laughs> so there we have our six and a half by six and a half inch square and it says mark the center of your square and cut from the corners diagonally towards the center so how do you get to the center of this square you would measure half of six and a half which is what <laughs> three and a quarter so from the top three and a quarter inches three and a quarter inches or if you're using something like a straw and you have an extra one you can you know fold the straw in half and see how long that actually is and then that's where you should measure and then three and a half three and a quarter three and a quarter and i'm just gonna draw where those two lines intersect each other and make a perpendicular line. Two perpendicular lines crossing each other. Hmm, mine look a little funny. All right. So I just did it lightly so it doesn't really mess up on here, just in case, but there's my, I'll make them darker. <laughs> Just a quick measurement, just to double check. Yes, three and a quarter and three and a quarter. Pretty good. So we have that. My instructions from there. Cut from the corners diagonally towards the center of the square. So we have our first cut there. I've made some pinwheels in my time and one thing that I usually see is don't cut all the way to the center but we'll see I'm not going to cut all the way to the center because then we can always go back if we need to. that's my mom say hi to my mom everyone <laughs> all right so uh yeah so we cut them in stopping about one and a half inches from the center point good so kind of did something like that not exactly but hey we're all engineers here so i use scissors to or a hole punch to make a hole in the center and at every other one of your eight corners All right, so since I had that three hole punch, yeah, you all probably shouldn't do this with scissors. I probably shouldn't do this with scissors either, but it's gonna be kind of tough to fit it in there. So let's see, let me use a pencil. It's a little safer. All right, so I made a small hole, but we're gonna end up putting our straw through here. So I'm gonna Stretch it out a little bit and then every other corner we need to add our hole punch. So one there. One there. Skip this one.
And if you don't have a hole puncher, that's okay too. You can do exactly what you did for that center hole with using your pencil. But remember you're safe, be safe. So you may have to put your paper down instead of holding it up and trying to shove it through there. Just be very safe and careful. It says the hole should be large enough for the small straw to fit through it. So this is our small straw and perfect. That fits through that one and then fits through all of these. Good. All right. So push the small straw through the center of your square and then bend, don't fold, so you don't wanna crease it down, but bend each of the corners onto the straw. So we got that one. It doesn't pop off. This is always the fun part. So don't crease it down, just fold it. Folded it down. So I didn't crease it, there I'll just fold it. And I still have my seal, my University of Michigan is still <laughs> alive back there. All right. Um, secure the front and the back of the pinwheel with tape, a paper clip, or rubber bands to keep the pinwheel together. So you kind of want to keep it tight together here. So what should we use to do that? It says, Paper clips, tape. I like tape. Let's start with tape so that those ends that keep popping up won't pop up. Let's start with that. And I'm not going to put it too close to that straw because we need it to move. So we got that secured. And so we got a little there and that's where we'll use our paper clips so let's see make sure that they are secured okay perfect and all right so we still got our our gap in there but i think that should work and if it doesn't we can go back and try something else Alrighty, good. All right, cleared a few things away. And so in case you needed some time to catch up to where we are with the pinwheel. So we cut our square, we cut it from diagonal, and then we folded it in on our straw. So already getting it. <sighs> and so the next step, deals with the actual stand for our pinwheel. So we have our cup. It says to cut the large straw. So I think I'm gonna to try to use this one first. Our large straw, just from any you know fast food place or something like that, to go order, which we've been doing a lot. Um, so then you cut a large straw so that it's equal in length to the bottom of your large cup. So here's our cup, the bottom of the cup, which is kind of the top right now, but usually the bottom, we'll use it as our top. And then we cut our large straw so that it's equal in length to the bottom. So it has the same diameter. All right, so we could use our pencil, which is probably the best way. And then I have my little mark there and I will cut. Double check. Yep, pretty much there. I think that's a good place. And so we secure this with our tape. Across the diameter of that cup. Gonna do a little extra. So I'm gonna do this cross like an X on there. Make it a little more secure. Just make sure you don't cover the ends of your straw because we need those open. All right. 
So then slide the end of your small straw through the large straw. All right, so I don't wanna use the bendy end, so I'm gonna use the rest of my straight end here to slide it through the large straw. Yes, it worked. <laughs> okay, slip it through there. Um, and then there should be about one and a half inches of the small straw that extends past the base. So, and it's about one and a half inches. Yep, pretty as that, one and a half right there. Okay, um, what's this bringing up here? You can trim the small straw if needed. Take your small cup and cut two holes in the opposite sides and tie a small piece of string between the two holes, creating a sort of bucket handle. So we're gonna try this one. Probably use some, something sharp, not too sharp. So I'm gonna use this paper clip actually. So push through, Let's see if this works. My fingers are out of the way there. So we have one hole that should do, and then we have another one going straight across from that one. Watch your fingers. All right. And then we have our string, and we're going to try to make a bucket handle out of that. I have to get my string. So if you have paper cups, this may be better. So there's some alternatives. This is what was here. So we can still do it, but as I'm trying to shove this through here, some things are, the, the plastic cup is kind of ripping. And so sometimes you may want it to rip, sometimes you may not. It's not as bad right now. And I'm using that paper clip to further push that string through. So if anybody likes to sew, which I used to do a lot of, and try to get, try to thread, it, thread your needle and can't get that thread through your needle, sometimes you use something else to kind of push it through there. So it says like this candle bucket, something like that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Secure one end of your string to the end of the small straw and tie the other end to the small cup handle. One end of your string to the end of the small straw. Let's see here. <laughs> this is the part I was kind of getting confused on when I read the instructions. So like, is it this end, is it that end? Let's see. One end to our What do you think? <laughs> My brother, the engineer, is behind the camera. I think this is what they mean. And tie the other end to the small cup handle. So here's our handle. And I think we have to not use the same straw. I think we have to cut this straw, I mean this string, and tie this string to this handle. That's what I'm thinking. Let's see where we go from here. <laughs> and this is all engineering, problem solving, troubleshooting, learning, and you know, some. if I had a teacher nearby, I'd definitely ask my teacher for help right now. Um, but, you know, we'll figure it out together. So we got that one. Just gonna tie this to make sure. String doesn't come out. Good. Got that going. And I'm thinking it's saying to tie this to the handle of this cup. And I'm just going to tie it like a, a little bow just in case we have to undo it. So like a half a, half a shoelace bow. All right. So I'm not sure if it means there. I think it may mean here. I don't know. Neither of these, <laughs> we'll try all of it. 
Okay, place tape or a binder clip on the end of the small straw to keep the pieces together. So, and we were supposed to cut something. I think I'm gonna just leave it long. I like it long like this. So it's just saying tape this so that the string doesn't fall off of that tape. Kind of gonna start behind the string so it doesn't slide off. And then I'm gonna go on the string. Something like that. And then it says, now time to blow on your pinwheel and watch it lift the small cup. What do you guys think is gonna happen? Think it'll work? I hope so. Let's see. Oh, my hand's in the way. <laughs> and so I think that's what it's supposed to do. Yay. So we could either head it here. How do you guys think it'll change if we moved this string here, which is another place that I thought about putting it. And then what do you think if we moved it here? That's another place I thought of putting it too. So um, another idea could be to make this string shorter so it doesn't have to go as far. We can make this pinwheel larger so we can maybe get more air in there. But then if it's larger, it's also heavier. So these are all things that we have to think about as engineers when we're solving problems. And so these are all things that they had to think about in The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. And so these are some of the concepts where, you know, you're really trying to solve a problem, and especially when you have the motivation of your family and people around you that you're actually helping out with your solution. That really helps a whole lot. So some other things you can do that they recommend are using weights. So we have these pennies for our weights. So what do you think will happen if I drop the pennies in this cup? And so this is something that we look at in physics or physics class or what physics is really all about is gravity and how different effects things have when gravity is involved. So if I drop these pins in, the gravity will pull downward, the tension will be on the string going upward, a few things like that. Whoa! Yeah, so, and they are pinwheel move. And then the opposite way of doing it is now that we have our pennies in there, we can lift those pennies with our pinwheel. So air either brushing through it and letting it go. And so how you store some of this energy from the wind, I mean, so you can connect it to electricity and you can power things. So even this pinwheel, I can feel a little breeze coming off of it when this is now pulling down. So these are some things for gas turbines and air and oil turbines that I've worked on before where like if you connect something to this side it can actually you can store that power but then if you connect something to this side you can use it as a pump so those are some things we look at as aerospace engineers when we're converting air into energy and so you can also just make this really fun and artistic I used a colorful blue cup to match my maize and blue school colors from the University of Michigan. Um, you can use colorful paper clips, colorful straws. You can use markers and draw in here. Um, if you want to know, you know, when you start off, this one's at the top, but you can make this one a different color. You can make this one white. And now when you spin it and it gets all the way at the top, the white one, you can see where that white one is moving every single time. So those are some things you can make do to make it a little more more fun and colorful um, and then also you can challenge your friends and so i'm going to challenge my brother next and ask him how many pennies can he lift if he did a, an experiment just like this and so i can lift i mean with my finger something but you, you saw that my just me blowing and we can even we can even race together. So um, you can do this with your friends on Zoom. You know you can FaceTime them from your house, and they can do a similar thing at at their house. Yes.
This is our windmill that we made and the point of it is to lift those pennies so we can engineer and we can invent new solutions. And what else do you think you can tie to this that can make it even more exciting? Maybe make it louder, maybe make it more powerful. So those are all things that you can also do with Abby Invents and uh, Breakable Crayons where you're inventing new solutions to some of these problems. So thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys soon. Enjoy your summer.